But higher rates for longer is souring the outlook for the bank industry, increasing the odds of that credit crunch. We're paying very close attention to the renewed free fall in certain regional banks today, as we've been talking about. So how does that all affect the alternative investment world, especially the likes of private credit? We welcome back Jonathan Levine, co-managing partner at Bain Capital Credit. Also with us, Bloomberg's Scarlett Fu. Scar, I'll hand it over to you first. Thank you so much. And Jonathan, great to see you in person here. Glad to be here. We've got to start with regional banks, because Jamie Dimon said that we're getting near the end of the regional banking crisis and that J.P. Morgan's takeover of First Republic uh, yesterday helps to stabilize everything. Now, that doesn't appear to be the case today with regional banks tumbling. Was Diamond wrong? Is he wrong? I wouldn't think so. Jamie Dimon would have way better information than any of the three of us. And uh, there's also a difference between the uh, stock prices tumbling and the deposits coming out. And it is, in fact, when the deposits come out. You know, banks are a, a um, institutions of confidence, right? You, they, no matter how well they try to match liabilities, they have daily deposits and they lend long term, whether that's one year, three year, five year. So uh, I think that we can take some comfort in, in the fact that there's a playbook developing that when this happens and when there is a bank run, mm -hmm. the FDIC knows what to do. The banks have some experience stepping in. There was more than one bidder, I understand, for First Republic. So uh, you know, I would hope it's slowing down. Um, I think we need to look at the deposit information and are people keeping their deposits there. I think that the banks that have had the biggest risks are the ones where they had deposit lots of depositors with greater th with greater than the FDIC insurance. Right. And one of the interesting statistics, which is a, a real shame about First Republic, is um, I saw the fact that while their deposit numbers were coming down, their mm. depositor numbers weren't coming down, right. which suggests that if you increased FDIC insurance or people had more confidence, it wasn't that they didn't like the bank or that they thought the bank had done something yeah. wrong, but they weren't going to have uninsured deposits. So, Jonathan, last time you were on um, with us, that was back, we think it was early February. You, start, you were looking at a 3% default rate. You liked Asia, you liked private credit in Europe. That was before the banking crisis. Where are you now? So we think that the default rate, once again, is still in that range. It's, it has not been huge this year. Different, I think, than past uh, cycles. It's not industry, you know, like an entire industry goes under. Um, you're, it's credit by credit. We have had a number of C investments get paid off at par recently. Oh. So it's really about credit selection there. Um, Asia has been one of our best performing markets because, it, particularly in our special situations business, because there's lots of growth. Um, credit conditions are actually pretty good and there's a need for capital. Clearly what's developing in the United States right now is there will be um, companies that are perfectly good companies that may need some refin refinancing and that's one type of par credit. And then the ones we're looking out for that could need more dramatic help or um, equity or structured um, equity investments or distressed are the companies that levered themselves with some presumption of access to a capital market mm -hmm. or access to a refinancing at a certain level. You can imagine somebody sitting in an investment committee going, well, if the, if uh, you know, SOFR goes to 6%, you know, then the whole world's ended. So that's what we're really looking, looking out for. And we are seeing interesting transactions in Europe, more structured than traditional private credit. But here in the U.S., the Fed has been raising rates for 14 months now. We're going to likely see tightening lending standards from those regional banks, as well as the big banks. T uh, CW's CEO, Katie Koch, was telling us yesterday that cracks are starting to show up in the private credit market, and investors should prepare for some major accidents in the next 12 to 18 months. What might those accidents look like? Sure. Uh, so first of all, private credit markets are this big, not yeah. this big. It's so there's middle market lending, senior and junior. There's um, you know hold co lending. There's uh, mega cap lending. So it's not a single thing. It's not as monolithic as it might have been in 08. Um, the places we are looking at um, where there might, where we think there could be weakness, are. Places where people lent, as I said before, expecting access to capital markets. Um, places where people lent against enterprise value and maybe even went into the hold co on tech companies, on super high growth companies. So there's been a huge re-rating there. And um, the third place is 
floating rate, floating rate capital structures where they've had their interest rates hedged. But to what Alex said earlier, if it's higher for longer, then when those hedges roll off, are they going to have a huge, a huge um, uh, increase in interest rate expense? Mm -hmm. That said, I do think one of the beauties of private credit is it can take equity. It can restructure. It can negotiate solutions mm -hmm. in a way that is harder in traditionally syndicated bank debt. Quick one. Commercial real estate, you like, you hate. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, cannot do quickly. Yes. <laughs> I, I would say that there are pockets where there are really interesting opportunities, and there are pockets where there are difficult opportunities. And it is much more nuanced than people say it is right now. What are lease roles going to look like? A offices versus B offices. I probably wouldn't be doing a lot of B locations in major urban centers. But I don't think that all commercial real estate in the United States is going away. Last question. We only have a minute here. Uh, the new X date is probably June 1st, according to Janet Yellen. How, how do you see concerns about a debt standoff spilling over into private credit? Will it? I if there's a debt standoff, it is going to spill over into absolutely everything. And I hope and pray that that is not going to happen. And even if they fix it by June 1st, the behaviors and the tone of the negotiation between now and then is really going to set what happens in the market. Hmm, that's interesting. So there could be an aftermath, even if it's not a direct impact. If people yeah. lose confidence in our ability to, to do this, then we're just going to have another debt ceiling a year later or two years later. Jonathan, thanks so much. It was really great to see you again. Jonathan Levine, a co-managing partner at Bank Capital and Bloomberg Scarlet Foo. Always my favorite. Thank you very much.